Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, logging in. We're going to um, start here in a few seconds. I'm uh, here with a friend of mine and a customer in uh, uh, mortgage uh, technology and marketing. Uh, let's say expert now in this field is uh, Corey Shelton with uh, Atlantic Coast Mortgage. Corey, good, uh, I guess, morning for me, afternoon for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're on the West Coast. I'm over here on the East Coast. Yeah. So let's. Uh, we have a different uh, different time zone. Soon it'll be uh, lunch. It's not very bright here right now. It's cloudy in uh, Southern California. Um, really appreciate you being here. I know um, time's valuable. You know, one of, one of the things I think would be uh, like to talk about is just your history in this industry, what you what you've uh, worked on, um, and then kind of what you're doing Atlantic Coast Mortgage, how long you've been there, and what you've uh, been able to accomplish, and what you see Atlantic Coast Mortgage doing as well. Yeah, so a little bit about my history. Um, I started probably around 10 years ago. Uh, I actually worked for a different mortgage company than I work for now. I uh, worked there for several years. I actually started out as a web developer. Um, ended up leaving there. I started my own brand strategy, digital marketing agency. I uh, had a bunch of different clients in different industries, uh, but I've always felt a closer tie to the mortgage industry. Um, and one of the clients that I had uh, from a consulting standpoint was Atlantic Coast Mortgage. And so that relationship basically transitioned to the role that I have right now, which is uh, the head of marketing here at Atlantic Coast Mortgage. So I've been here for around two years. Uh, we've done a, a lot of amazing things um, so far. A lot of the things that we've really focused in on uh, is the client experience, um, brand development, and then really just shoring up all of our marketing efforts as one. Uh, one of the things that we're working on right now that we're actually about to release here soon, which I'm excited about, which is one of the final pieces of our digital marketing side of things is a brand new website. that's gonna have a lot of uh, functionality and uh, personalization for when people are coming there and engaging with us that I think that uh, is missing in a lot of other lender websites. So that's a little bit of my background and kind of where I'm at right now. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I've, uh... I've I've been noticing Atlantic Coast Mortgage. And I've been noticing you guys uh, the digital side, and uh, I think that's something that is um, missed by a lot of lenders. You know, when you guys yeah. when you look at digital and the new website, um, what are the kind of what are the things that you're going to try to do with that? Are you going to retarget customers, or what, I mean, what's the what's the process, or what's the the thought behind what you'll do with the new website or digitally? What how do you touch your customers now? Sure. So some of the cool features that we'll have with the new website is, you know, we'll be leveraging some cookie technology. We'll be doing like you just talked about from a retargeting standpoint, but really just trying to figure out how we can tailor the experience, both for the, the actual user that's uh, viewing the website, as well as even for our loan officers. So if you go to one of our loan officer profiles, basically all their information is going to follow you around the site. Um, but even being able to tailor the experience based upon the loan officer that you uh, actually viewed is going to be possible as well. So to me, it's really just taking a holistic approach of how can we make that experience as good as possible, right? Another another thing that we're going to be looking at doing is, you know, with being able to leverage our, our CRM, being able to, to leverage and accelerate uh, from that standpoint, particularly for emails, is when people are clicking links, we'll be able to use different things like URL query parameters to even tailor their experience, right? And so to me, it's just really fine tuning every aspect of it um, to look at not only how can we improve it from the brand and marketing side of, of ACM, but really more importantly, how can we tailor the experience for the borrower or the lead or the person who's coming to, to the website, right? At the end of the day, I think that people get it a little bit wrong where they're looking at how can I get value from those leads, from those borrowers, and instead flipping that around to how can we provide value to them? And as a result of that, you know, we get the ROI, we get the value in terms of being able to close more loans, being able to help more people get into a home. Yeah, I think what you just said there, um, providing value and then also the customer experience. You know, it's, yeah. it's interesting. And I think lenders are seeing this now. And by all industries are seeing this now that it used to be this model was um, it was Walmart or Nordstrom's. Right? Yeah. Walmart, great company. Walmart provides a great service product. They're reliable. They allow everyone in America to buy their kid a new bike for their birthday, right? You know, everyone to be able to get a barbecue for their backyard. Um, but the service, you're not going to go in there. They're not going to help you pick that bike out, really. And, you know, that's not their business model. They're delivered yeah. price, 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 price. Nordstrom's has been, um, you know, value, 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 value. 
right? You know, or service, high service, high service, high service, but obviously more expensive. Now we're right. seeing this convergence of, you know, you can give your, people expect high service and low price, right? So that's like yeah. they're really they're, they're looking for the value of it. And, you know, the customer experience, I think, is something that, um, you know, I think we were talking about this before, which is really when you're looking at technology and how you manage everything, you know, I think you you said customer experience, you know, platform, which I, I love the idea of that, which is really what you're what you're building is how do you manage the overall customer experience and the website being something that is, I'd say, um, you know, more storefront. But it sounds like it's more storefront, right? If I'm a yeah. consumer of yours, if I'm a customer, a pr prospective borrower, and I interact with your website, and I know that I'm working with Corey, and I'm seeing you follow me around the store as I ask questions so I can interact with you, that feels like you're connected with me, right? That's kind of what you would expect in a store and really, you know, managing that experience, right? Yeah, and to me, I, I look at it as how can we provide really a white glove kind of concierge experience? So going back to the example you just talked about the store, you know, I don't know if you've ever gone into a, a store and you basically have that person constantly following you around. They're like, hey, Josh, can I help you with anything? And you're like, no, I'm good right now. But they're still kind of looming around. You're like, I can't do what I'm trying to do because I'm so paranoid about you watching over my shoulder uh, versus a more white glove or concierge experience where it's like, hey, let me know if you need any help. And they're going to be there at the right time, at the right moment, uh, yeah. through the right channels, right? If we're talking about from a digital standpoint. And to me, that's really how I'm trying to shift things from Atlantic Coast Mortgage standpoint uh, with our marketing. It's, you know, rather than us sitting there and trying to hound somebody of like, hey, do you need a mortgage? Do you need a mortgage? Do you need a mortgage? Instead, it's really trying to understand uh, each individual and tailor the experience to them so that at the end of the day, you know, they're coming to us not only because we have a great rate, but more importantly, because of the relationship that we've built, the trust, the rapport, all of that. And ultimately, what that all boils down to is the the more comprehensive and more holistic experience in general right and so to me that's constantly what i'm looking at is how can we provide value how can we be there at the right time uh through the right channel in the way that they want to communicate because that's another big thing too you know you and i have talked about this before in an interview that, that i did with you where you know some of your friends you may text them uh throughout the day you know personal stuff but if you text them something that's business related they don't respond, whereas you have to do it through email. And so I think it's the same approach with this of, you know, rather than taking a one size fits all approach, which I see a lot of marketing people uh, do, or a lot of companies or different industries do, it's really trying to figure out how you can segment your audience, not for your sake, but for their sake, right? So that again, going back to that whole notion of how can I provide value to these individuals in a way that makes sense, um, that, that meets them where they're at. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I've you know, I've been in this industry for 21 years now, and I've talked to you know lenders oh, through the years and about even simply some, doing something in, through email. And they're like, no, I, I like to just you know I, the borrowers I work with, they like to call me. It's like, why would you cut out all the people that would want to email you in the marketplace? Yeah, yeah. Or right, you know, why would you want to segment yourself to just one channel? Or you know, I don't oh I don't text. Well, why would you not use that? Because there's people that will you know we have lenders who. So they have whole transactions just with their text, just basically through text messages. Almost never even have a conversation with the customer from the processor to the loan officer, from the very beginning right. of a lead inquiry, it's all done through text. You know, why not? Yeah. You know, why, you, why limit yourself? Or to your point is don't segment yourself for yourself, but you need to allow yourself yeah. to be able to be accessed by all borrowers in whatever form they want. And it changes through the process too, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think part of that process is, is taking a look at how you're actually segmenting them, right? So it's like looking at different things like social signals, geographic, demographic, behavioral, psychographics, and even financial related data and kind of taking those things into account, right? <laughs> and I know that that sounds like a lot, but I think that the, the big thing, you know, you hear this all the time, it's like the, the hardest step is always the first step. And so, you know, the approach that we're taking right now is we may not be ultimately where we wanna be. And to be honest, I don't know that we ever will because Today, if I if I had could envision in my mind where we want to be, if we were actually at that place right now, then there would be another step forward of customization or personalization, or being able to tailor the experience even more, right? Um, and so I think it's just kind of trying to take all of those things um, again, going back to that holistic approach of how can I continue to provide value to them versus me trying to extract value out of them. 
you know, like that. Um, you know, what's interesting, you talk about the analytics and the data analytics and how you can really use that. It's you know, right now in the industry, it's hard to 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 say that, you know, I, I was talking to some lenders recently and they're working on building a predictive model to see what works best for their direct mail program. And at the end of the day, we looked at it and said, well, the truth is pretty much everyone qualifies. You want, you're like, well, we want to get as big of a universe as possible right now. We want to mail everybody. So like, it, like, so right now, you know, lenders are thinking, well, in the future, that doesn't really pertain to me. But right before this, it was pertaining to a lot of people. It actually was very effective. And what I would say is right now, and you guys are on the offensive right now, adding more technology, increasing your, your data and your intelligence so that as soon as the market changes, if you can gather this stuff now, put this all this practice into place, um, uh, you know, a year and a half from now, rates go up a percent and a half. Well, you'll know who to really actually be marketing to, who to spend your time with and who to you know, work on and who to re-engage with. And as they interact and they do new things, you'll know who to reach out to, right? I mean, that's really what it comes down to is it's today, it's some lenders, you know, it's hard to think that, that there's a value in it, but there is today. But it's really about the future, isn't it? About building a customer for life and getting retention and getting that, you know, fit, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth transaction. Yeah, and I like what you just talked about. You, you mentioned three things. You said technology, data, and intelligence. And I think that people nowadays are really focused in on technology and data, but where they're missing is the intelligent piece of it. This is something I, I, I was kind of, playing around with and I wrote down earlier, but it was this idea that, you know, data is simply raw input from various segmented sources, kind of what I just outlined, right? So you have social signals, geographic, demographic, behavioral, all these different things, right? These inputs, but really where it matters is translating that into information. And what you do with that information is then communication, right? And communication at the right or wrong time through the right or wrong channels is ultimately what leads to engagement and that engagement is what initiates, builds, or grows relationships for either the better or the worse, right? And so for me, that's kind of the approach that I'm taking is data is great, but being able, but without translating that into usable, actionable information, it's really pointless. And so that's where I think that people get bogged down is because, you know, there's the, the buzzwords of big data. And I think that that's great if you have a massive team of people that can do that. But I think for a lot of lenders um, and a lot of businesses in general, I think just starting off out small with the data that they do have and really focusing in on how they can use that data and what is the usable data that they actually have so that they can translate that into um, actionable information that they can then use for communication and then further use that to properly engage, you know, their different segmented audiences. Yeah, I think that's uh, what you said is, is, is um, makes a lot of sense. It's, Data for just data sake doesn't really do anyone any good. You you have to it has to be um, yeah. interpreted. It has to be communicated. It has to be actionable. You use the term actionable, um, and I think yep. that's you know we've seen lenders who have actually some good data, some good buying signs yep. from their customers, servicers. And this is you know pre you know pre rate drop, right? Um, now it's, you know, if you're a servicer, every one of your customers, if they haven't refinanced in the last six months, wants to refi now. Like there's not like a whole lot of, uh, you know, data analytics you want to do is who's got the highest FICO score, who's got the lowest LTV, who's going to be the quickest and easiest to get done right now. As you know, that's, you yeah. maybe want to prioritize that. But is having, um you know, this this data and, and, and making it actionable. Yeah. You know, I, and you I, know, and, and, I would and, even and say take an action on it, right? Yeah, exactly. And I would say this is a little bit of, of a hyperbolic uh, example, but to use politics as an example, right? Data is me telling you that I'm voting for the best presidential candidate, right? Now, if that's all you all the all you have right there, that can go one of two ways, and it's probably going to end up probably bad depending upon which way you go. Whereas being able to translate that data into usable information, that's you know from the information side is me telling you which candidate that is so that you can communicate, respond, and engage with me accordingly, right? And it goes back to the point that you just were making a second ago. It's like being able to take a look at, at different borrowers, whether it's first-time bar, uh, borrowers, refinance, older buyers uh, from a reverse standpoint, veteran, um, or borrower leads that are coming in from social platforms or search engine uh, ads, things like that. It's like you're getting the information or the data, but you need to turn that into that actionable information so that you actually understand the context of 
who they are and how to communicate with them because ultimately that's when it, what's going to transition into those conversions that you want, particularly if you're focusing in on giving value first um, instead of trying to extract value first. Yeah, and then and, and I'm going to come back to what you said again, actionable. So when you mean when you say actionable, you also mean there and therefore take an action on those things, right? You have to have the data and and you want automation. You know, it's, it's if you get this data list and you know I've seen lenders who get you know, uh, oh, I, you know, I'll get an email every night and I, I get a list of all the customers who pulled their credit. Oh, well, what do you do with that? Oh, you know, yeah. so-and-so cuts it up in the morning, kind of sends out all the emails to the loan officer, says, hey, someone, your past customer just pulled their credit. And it's like, well, how effective do you think that really is? That It's not actionable. You're not really taking, you're, you're not really taking a, an automated or, you know, holistic approach of action on that. Right. So I think that's yep. the other side of it is, you and this that's what's great where we are right now five years ago you couldn't do all this now it's at a yep. place where you can get this actionable data and then actually go automate and take action right you can without yep. you can mail them text them facebook post them instagram them uh give them a phone call i mean there's all you know drop them a voicemail there's all these different ways that you can turn this data you know intelligence into something that actually turns into action which ultimately is you know giving you a result which what we always talk about in our business is we're in the business of helping lenders close more loans. We're not necessarily, you know, we happen to have a CRM and a marketing automation platform to do that, but ultimately it's to help give you an end result. So, yeah. you know, if we just give you data that doesn't do anything, if we just give you something to give action on that doesn't, we have to tie all this stuff together so you can get a, a result, which is, you know, ultimately more business, long-term business, customers for life, happier people, right? Happier staff because everyone's, you know, their job's easier and they're all making more money. Yeah, and, and I, I think what you were, were just saying is great, and, and that goes to the point of, I think a lot of people look at how can I grow, right? When really, for at least from my standpoint, the way I look at it is how can we scale? And there's a huge difference between those two things. And I think Accelerate in particular really helps you do that. It's like growing is I add one person to my team, I can help one more person. You know, being able to scale is I'm using this automation in a very intelligent way, I'm taking this data, I'm translating it into usable information, and then I'm able to scale that out through the automation so that I can create those deeper connections with those individuals, whether they're leads or past borrowers or people that are even in process right now. And so I think that that's where going back to the, the technology, data and intelligence thing you were talking about earlier, it's really being able to look at that intelligence piece and starting out small to say, OK, you know, growth is cool, but you know what's really great is being able to scale. And that's one of the things I always tell our loan officers where I'm like, hey, you know, you're reaching out to, you know, as an example, 100 individuals a month. What if you could reach out to 1,000 individuals a month and still keep that same level of engagement? Well, if you're taking the data and you're actually looking at it uh, in an intelligent way, you can translate that to those different segmented audiences uh, into actionable, uh, engaging communication that deepens that relationship, adds value to them, and then also adds value to your bottom line as well. And I think that to me, that's take a, going back to what I said earlier, that's really kind of flushing out that more holistic approach that I was speaking of earlier. Yeah, I, I think that's a great example of uh, growth versus scale. Because, you know, you, you, being in this business for a long time, I always ran con, consumer direct operations, which yeah. is basically what can you do multiple time repeat you know and train people but at the end of the day there's always a handful of loan officers that work for me um and one of them always just through over i don't know 15 years was always the number one loan officer just always crushed it and the reality was she had her own process and her own program that she ran she kind of yeah. did things her, somewhat her own way she she used our system for open leads and rehash so she could steal leads, you know, not steal, but take Shark Tank deals from other people. She used it for that. She used it to get the initial lead and create an, you know, create an LOS. Um, but she had, for a long time, she had these sheets of paper and just stacks and piles of, every time she talked to a customer, she would take notes and then she'd put their name on it and, and then she would save it. And then she would just come in at a day and grab a, you know, foot long stack of papers and call through those people. And that's, I mean, and the truth is, she closed more loans for me than anyone else ever had ever had work for me. Now yeah. I could not, I tried to teach her process to everyone else in the office, but no one else could, no one else could do that because they weren't her. It wasn't the fact that she used a stack of paper. When we use prioritize alerts, we moved to our prioritize alerts inside our, our software. 
she then started getting rid of this paper and that stack of paper started dwindling away. She goes, well, you know what? I like this because now this is telling me I should make this call and I didn't. I realized that's a call I should make and it's a little more effective than all this paper. So that we eventually won her over to, to use yep. the system to the extent. But the re truth of it was, I, 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 if I could have, I, I set out to build my software originally for myself to close more loans. That's yeah. that was my result. So if I could have you know, scaled Queenie and re repeated her 50 times over, I would have just done that. I wouldn't have built you know, more software, but I couldn't, you can't do that. You, so it's, how do you get the average person to be above average? Right, you know how to yeah. be to be highly successful, and that's a scalable, repeatable process. And you guys are working on that, obviously, with technology now. And I think those are going to lenders like you will win in the future. I think what I think what you just said too was was really great from the standpoint of taking those notes. I can't tell you, <coughs> excuse me, I can't tell you how many conversations I have with our loan officers where it's like, hey, take that extra two seconds to jot down whatever the conversation you was with them, or a reminder. So going back to the whole scaling, growing aspect of it, right? It's like you can create sort of a general video that may apply to an entire segmented audience, send that out to 100 people. That's scaling. But at the same time, you still don't want to lose that personalized touch like you were just talking about. So being able to take those notes and, and whether it's sending a text video or maybe an email video and just saying, hey, Josh, had a great time. Um, uh, or was thinking about you the other day. You know, rates are super low. I know last time we talked, your rate was this you know, whatever the case is, right? How's your family doing? That kind of thing. Where you're able to inject in some of those personalized touches um, that are relevant to that person. It's like, you don't have to have one or the other. And I think that a lot of times people think, well, if I'm doing, if I'm doing the scaling, I don't want to just automate everything. So I'm just going to stick with what I'm doing. I think there's a hybrid approach that people can take uh, where you're able to get the best of both worlds. And really, like you just pointed out, you're able to figure out what works for you because it goes back to what I said at the beginning, where it's a one size approach doesn't fit for the, for every uh, borrower and in the same regards a one-size-fit approach doesn't apply to every single loan officer but I think being able to um, iteratively add in some of these technologies uh, from that scaling standpoint will inherently be able to allow those individuals to increase you know the, the production volume uh, and increase their pipeline volume that they have coming in right um, but I think that that's also where you kind of have to win uh, the hearts and minds first before you can get them to adopt the technology, uh, which is a whole nother conversation in and of itself. That's true. So kind of, um, if, if you're gonna leave from a digital side, because you have a digital background, um, and that and that allows for lenders to do so many things, like retargeting. You know, it's a very yeah. simple thought of dropping a cookie on someone's desktop after they go to your website. What you know? What what's a tip that you would you know give um, to our lenders to about on the digital side? What where would you start first to make sure you're um, you know getting the right uh, reach out there? Your website's working right. You know what you know strategy? What's the first strategy or, or you know thing you you would take a look at if you you know you came into a new lender? What do you start with? I mean, I think there's a couple of different things. You know, if you want to talk about like lead generation, for example, on um, the new website that we're about to push out, we've custom built out our, our lead generation funnel for each loan officer. Um, so that, you know, when someone goes to a landing page, we can retarget that individual, right? So that's a very simple thing that people can do. If you're all, if you're going, if you're talking about from the CRM standpoint, uh, being able to tailor people's experience on the website based upon links that they're clicking, right? So again, going back to being able to leverage URL query parameters um, that you can then leverage on your website to modify the experience and tweak that according to whether it's who the individual is, whether it's like you coming to the site and you'd be like, hey, Josh, good to see you again, um, or literally changing the content um, based upon the context of whatever you know the, the material is you're coming from, the email content, right? Um, I think there's a lot of different really easy things that, that people can do. And even going, taking you know one other idea from the, the CRM side of things is, if you have someone who's a lead, depending upon um, what kind of uh, uh, channel or um, where they're coming from, just in general, right? I think that you can also take those, um, you can take those leads as well. And if it's something general, I just lost my train of thought. So give me one second to, to get it back. Um, oh, so if you have, I got it. So if, there, if, you, if you have a general lead that's coming through, right? Uh, and you're sending out a general email and you're trying to figure out how to segment them because maybe you don't know how to segment them correctly yet. Even just something as simple as asking them in the email, hey, Josh, um, you know, 
would love to, to tailor the experience to you, right? Obviously, I'm paraphrasing here. You know, let us know which situation or which option works best for you. And you can have a, a couple of different options there, whether it's for purchase or refinance. And based upon the link that they're clicking, you can then completely to change the, the journey that you're sending them on after that, right? So I think that those are a couple, I guess, if I was going to say like simple tips that people can implement um, from a CRM or even from a website standpoint, or even conjunction with both of them, um, that people can implement to increase that engagement and to tailor that experience better for those individuals. That makes sense. Yeah, you, you, having something that's relevant to the customer, so having using a little bit of intelligence and that's in there. Um, listen, we're going to be wrapping up. This is supposed to be about 20, 20, 25 minutes. We went a little bit over, but that's good. I think this was some good content. And uh, um, we uh, appreciate your time. You know, I, I really like the idea of how, um, and this is from another conversation we had, which is how you're looking at customer experience and really what that what that means. I think that's really, yep. you know, the idea of what is your customer? What's the experience? What would it be like to buy a loan from you? All right, what's the process look like from touch points to operational stuff? I think that's really I think powerful and, um, you know, being able to turn that into you know, actual items and stuff. I think it's, you know, really helpful for a lender. So, Corey, appreciate your time. You have a, a great rest of the day. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. Catch you later. All right, guys.